Morning. Hi, Joanna and, Morning. and Paul. Great. Um, we uh, decided to get together to have this conversation um, because we've been talking about the new proposal that um, you were bringing around transport. And um, part of that was because I'm a parent and a governor at Ralph Allen School. And um, I'm from the conversations that we'd had, I've become aware that the, um, the proposed proposed ideas would have an impact on um, enabling potentially more people to access Ralph Allen School more easily via bike, uh, particularly. And um, so I was just curious to hear a bit more about the proposal and uh, also would like to be able to share it with um, the community at the school for them to be able to have an idea of what the proposal is. And I thought having a conversation with you might make that um, a bit easier to understand because sometimes it's difficult and people don't have time. So if people could watch a video that just see, hears what, what the proposal is from your um, perspective, that would be really brilliant. So um, Paul, I'm gonna hand over to you just to um, tell us a bit more about the proposal. Certainly, thanks, Nikki. So I'm I'm Paul Garrett. I'm the traffic and network manager for the council. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just share my screen of, of the council website um, to show you what we're consulting on at the moment. Um, just before I do that, um, I'll introduce jo um, Joanna here. Um, Joanna Wright, our, our, our cabinet member for um, transport. Um, Hi. Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm. Joint Cabinet Member for Transport Services with Neil Butters at Bath and North East Somerset Council and I'm also Ward Member for Lambridge at Bath and North East Somerset Council. So we were given money through the pandemic by the DFT uh, a year ago or money that we could bid for on emergency active travel measures and the way that that money was given was in two tranches. The first tranche was given out last year where we had to put quickly um, foot widening pavements etc as some people will know in the city centre we closed down some streets etc and then we were given further funding which we had to bid for and explain why we wanted to spend it and how we wanted to spend it so we've chosen two schemes but we have to consult on them and this is one of the reasons why we want as many people to take part in this piece of work as possible so I'll leave Paul now to explain what those two schemes are thank you Right, so yes, yeah, so as, as Joanne has just said there, with um, money from the government, which is actually funding two schemes, um, and we're putting our own funding into a third scheme, which is, it, it ties in with, with, with all three really, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, and for these schemes, we've designed them using new design principles on the cycle infrastructure. I think it's fair to say in the past, a lot of cycle facilities that went in didn't, didn't properly serve cyclists and they, they really not very direct and, and now what we're trying to do is give a lot more priority for cyclists give them decent facilities that, that help you get from a to b in, in a direct line rather than, than go all over the place and, and not really where you want to go so that that's been very much the focus of this but also not just focusing on cyclists um, making improvements for pedestrians as well um, and, and where it ties in, in improve the experience for, for bus users too and to help um, help improve those facilities so what I'm going to do is just share my screen and I'll show you the council web page. Okay, so our consultation is, is underway now and it finishes on the 21st of March. So to access these schemes, all you need to do from the, from the home page of the council website, there's a have your say section and you can go respond to a consultation and it takes you to all the different consultations that are going on at the moment. So these are our travel and transport schemes. We've got a number of, of those being consulted on at the moment, but the one we're talking about right now are these active travel schemes. And these are the three schemes. So the one, ones of interest to us right now uh, are these two um, in, in the vicinity of Ralph Allen School. Um, but just worth mentioning, we've also got a proposal to put some, some new cycle lanes on Upper Bristol Road in, in Bath. Um, that, that people are certainly welcome to look at and comment on as well. So if I just show you a map of the area. So of course, down here off of Clariton Down Road, we've got Brown Island School here. And these 
different coloured lines represent um, proposals, existing site infrastructure and other things we intend to do in the future. And the blue lines represent the proposals we have at the moment. So just here we've got Beckford Road, we've got North Road, there's University, um, this residential road here, Copsland, and then we've got the Rainbow Woods here, taking us down to Claverton Down Road. So just starting on, on the Beckford Road area, so all, all these maps are available from the consultation page on our, on our website. Um, and you can just move your cursor along here and if you click on the point, it will come up with actual detail drawing of what we're looking to do. So Beckford Road is where we are here. So just at the bottom of the page here is, is the traffic lights junction with Barthwick Street. So appreciate quite a lot of detail going on here, but I'll, I'll explain it to you. So what we're looking at doing is putting a, a new uh, cycle lane on the, the northwest side of the road, so going uphill. So at the moment, so I've got all these yellow boxes keep appearing. There's some parking along this side of the road at the moment. And what would happen, that would be removed and replaced by a cycle lane that's actually physically separated from traffic. So to make cyclists feel safer um, and then just give them a bit of space from passing vehicles. So these pictures here give a bit of an example of what those devices might look like for separating traffic. It may not look exactly like this, but it just gives you a flavour of what we'd be doing. And then where we've got any bus stops where there's a cycle lane, what we'd actually do is continue the cycle lane between the bus stop and the pavement. So what that means is, is that cyclists don't, don't have to go out into the road and overtake a, a stationary bus. So it just makes it safer for cyclists and, and helps give them priority on, on that route. So that's what we have in, in Beckford Road. And then as we get to, so that continues all, all the way along Beckford Road, the cycle lanes all the way up to the traffic light junction here with, with Sydney Road and North Road. And then what we're proposing in North Road is a, a road closure by means of what we call a bus gate. So that would be roughly here near King Edward School. So it wouldn't be a, a complete physical closure of the road what it would be is, is a bus um, a bus gate controlled by cameras, enforced by cameras. So buses and taxis, emergency vehicles, cyclists, of course, would still be able to go through it, but general traffic wouldn't be able to use it as a true route. So the idea is, is to make North Road a much more quiet, relatively traffic-free route to actually get from the city centre up to the university. And out of the three hills, the three, of course, there's three different ways to get from the city centre up to university, but North Road is actually the least steep hill of, of the three. And just a, another part of the proposals here. So moving further towards the university, we've got the avenue here. So this purple highlighted bit is another improvement we'd look to do. So at the moment, the avenue, um, it's been closed there for years for traffic in, the, in this purple section. Uh, and only open to pedestrians and what we would look to do is construct a new um, cycle path right next to that uh, pavement to help uh, cyclists um, get to, to the other side of the university um, and cyclists use it already and they, they, they're, they're cycling along what's actually a quite a narrow pavement so this would actually separate the, the cyclists from pedestrians um, so, and it would be a very good route, wouldn't it, to get to the cats and dogs home, to the American um, Museum, it, and right. if you're at the university, to or, or along on along on on the plateau, as we're calling that area, to get down to Woolly Weir and to the canal. So you know that's an important link. Yeah, absolutely. So it just opens up, and what what we're doing, we're, we're gradually putting together. Well, hopefully not gradually. We're trying to accelerate this process really. It's just building a much better network for cyclists. So and another part of the proposals, I'll just take you on to now. So the same, same type of, uh, of area near the university here. So either end here of Copsland, we would put in two new zebra crossings. And these are what we call parallel zebra crossings, which can actually be used by cyclists as well as pedestrians. Of course, your, your traditional zebra crossing can only be used by pedestrian cyclists and then dismount before using one. That these would actually have a separate area for crossing for, for cyclists. 
So that, that's what you can see on, on this drawing here, where you've got Coxland, the zebra crossing, and then next to it, there's a cycle facility. And we'd also look to introduce a new uh, island here, pedestrian refuge island at the junction with North Road, because that's a really, a really wide junction to cross. So that, that would make it a lot simpler. So really, having one of these zebra crossings at either end of Coxland, then produces quite a nice continuous route through the Rainbow Woods down to Claverton Down Road. And then later on, we'll work on further proposals. Aren't, they're not ready yet, but we look to improve the existing zebra crossing at the end of the path through Rainbow Woods here. Um, look to, to improve the, the cycle route for, up to, to Route Allen School here. And then further afield, actually provide new cycle links um, further into Coombe Down and Fox Hill and Mulberry Park. That whole stretch we've called um, Scholars Way. So there's been the sort of understanding that the two universities of Bath, Bath Spa and Bath University, either end of the city, could be connected along this whole continuous foot route called Scholars Way that would link them together. And this is part of an important section of bringing that together. Yeah. So quite quite ambitious and quite a change from what the council's done before in, in providing these measures for cyclists and pedestrians and on, on our website we've got quite a lot of information on each each scheme how how it affects pedestrians cyclists residents and we've given you examples of, of what these sort of things might look like so what um where we have that cycle lane going for a bus stop so for example here's here's a uh, a photo of, uh, of a, a bus stop that's been designed in a similar way in London where you've got the cycle lane comes up to the same level as the pavement and then goes through like that and they don't have to go around the buses that's one example um, and I'll also show you a continuous footway as well I love continuous footways. They're a real game changer to how people walk, particularly because it means that they have the right of way when they get to a road at a junction rather than a car well, that's it. So again, an example from London, ignore the blue cycle lane in front, that's, that's not, we're not painting all our cycle lane blue. But here, here, here you go, as John has just said, the continuous footway, it, it kind of makes the side road look all, almost like a private access. And, and the idea is you're making the, 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 the footway, the pavement, continue right across. And it's giving pedestrians that priority. So cars, as they come up, you actually give way to people crossing before they come out onto the main road and give way again. So it's just it's just really creating a change of environment to put pedestrians first. It's, a, it's only a minor inconvenience to people driving and, it, and it's just really reinforcing pedestrians do have that right of way. So where so where did you where are those um, are there, were those happening on the route that you just described? Yes, that's right. So in on either end of Coxland, that's what we'd have um, okay. its junctions with um, Wickham Hill and Oakley, and then on Beckford Road, just moving back on the map up here. We would propose that along the cycle routes here. So the junction with Forrester Road and the junction with um, Beckford Gardens here as well. Right. So just showing them on, on the draw. I've seen them in operation in both Manchester and in London. And, you know, lots of people are, are sceptical that people won't drive their cars and, and, you know, behave well as a driver. But actually, it's not being shown to be the case at all. And in fact, it creates a much better environment for lots of people. And it forces cars, in fact, to slow down and think about their behaviour. So it creates less accidents generally. So, is it is it like a culture change though? Does it like take a bit of time for people to shift to that idea? Um, I think it's because you can actually see it. It's it's more than just a sign. So you know that you've got to do something different in your car. You know, if you if you're coming up to a pavement in your car, you're going to slow down, aren't you? Because you're going to worry about your car being ripped to shreds if you rush over it. So you do really think about that and. You know, you know, there, there was a there's a part of Manchester where they've done this a whole route down a main road in an area where, you know, people use cars a lot and they were all driving very thoughtfully and responsibly. Well, it's noticeable. 
It looks exciting. I mean, it's exciting bringing some new new techniques into into the city. I feel like that's you know that feels like an exciting thing to um, add into the whole. You know that it's not just doing a route that doesn't kind of uh, necess- you know gets affected by bus stops and things like that. It's really it's really nice to cons- to feel like the cycle route is being considered in a way that cyclists for instance at bus stops don't have to pull out around a bus and that that's being considered so I think as a, as you know I'm a driver and a cyclist and a pedestrian but I um I as a cyclist I'm always feeling I'm having to you know stop or get off or go around or deal with things parked on the cycle route so it's really nice to feel that that's something that is considered and it also reduces the likelihood of accidents I know that you know students going along cycling to school at Ralph Allen have um cycled into parked cars um you know it's that kind of it's just being having a little bit more uh, of a sense of developing cycle routes that are a bit more continuous that's it and it's doing them of a good a good quality as well so we're well we're, we're not just going to put cycle routes in as, as a token gesture and, and if the road surface isn't any good then we will improve that we will we will re- resurface it in the new cycle lanes if it's not up to scratch because we know that road surface is particularly important to cyclists and, and, and going through Rainbow Woods as well, we know that that path down there isn't always ideal, particularly in the winter. Um, and we're in discussions with the National Trust at the moment about how we could potentially improve that as well. So that doesn't form part of the scheme immediately, but that's something we want to do as soon as we can, because we know it's not just in summer, of course, people want to cycle. We, we want people to feel they can they can use these routes all year round. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's certainly putting in mean, meaningful measures and, and we want to try new things, um, uh, but, do it, but do it safely so that, that so these benefit cyclists and pedestrians. Um, and yeah, we feel it's the right thing to be doing right now. So, the gov- so sorry to interrupt, the government have, you know, put in uh, something, uh, two documents, one called gear change and one called LTN 120. And the LTN 120 really sort of standardizes the expectations across the country of what um, cycle infrastructure and walking infrastructure needs to look like. And, and it's a really quite bold move and a real change across the landscape that will be coming across everywhere. So we have to deliver things now to these standards. We can't just say, oh, let's paint a white line and we're done. And, and I fully recognize that lots of people will be a bit alarmed about a bus gate at the, at the bottom of North Road and that change. But what we are trying to really think about is um, the climate emergency and the ecological emergency that we're in. Even Grant Schatz has said that all of us in urban areas need to reduce our journeys by 50% to walking and cycling by 2030. So the way we're going to use our urban landscape is going to be different. And this is about real change in doing that. And we, 2030 isn't very far away. So how do we get there? And this scheme is a way of enabling that change. So um, so that's that's great. Thank you, Joanna. And um, in terms of North Road, I mean, I'm just thinking of, like you didn't mention, obviously residents can go through that bus gate to their houses. No? no, no, no. So okay. yes, it, it, it will cause inconvenience to some people. We do admit that, but it's I, I suppose it's the greater benefit really is that it provides a much a much better environment for cyclists. But, but at the same time, even though it might cause some inconvenience to residents, at the same time they'll they'll end up with a much quieter road that's relatively traffic free as well. So but they would still have to they would be able to go to the top and then come down it to their houses. So no one will not be able to get to their home by car. Their j- journey just will be more circuitous. Right. Okay. Wiggly. So that's, that, so they, can, they can get to their houses. It's they just, can get to their house by vehicle, but they just can't get through the bus gate. And if you look at North Road after King Edward School, um, for a good section of it, there are there are there are no properties on that first section. And, and we clearly understand that there are three hills to get to the university. There's North Road, there's Whitcomb, and I forget the Bathwick. other one now. Bathwick. Thank you. Bathwick. Bathwick Hill, you know, both Bathwick and Whitcomb have a lot of residents on them. Out of the three of them, North Road has the, the, the least gradient, it has the least number of residents along it. Um, and, and we wanted to basically choose a hill that we thought we could begin this journey on that didn't affect too many residents. And this is the what we think is the best hill to begin that. 
Um, there are over 4,000 students who are live in halls at, this, at the university. So we recognize too that how we get them to and from the city center is important. And this is the route that could, they could then use. Um, there are, we, we have now have e-scooters coming into the city and, and there are going to be a, a whole new ways of getting around. And this enables that change of behavior. Mm. Um, I mean, as a parent who sometimes drives up at the beginning of the school day, not at the moment, um, up Barfoot Hill, uh, I know that I am endlessly stuck behind, well, I think I'm stuck behind a very super slow bus or a very super slow car, but then I realise that actually it's a poor cyclist who has got a huge traffic jam behind them and they're doing that incredible cycle up Barthwick Hill uh, to only be surrounded by vehicles pumping out fumes going super slowly kind of not being annoyed but you can kind of tell it's all just quite tricky so i i feel like um dividing that up is a really nice plan you know having cyclists going up that other hill uh would really help in terms of traffic in the mornings and make it more pleasant for those cyclists so i i feel like ultimately it's a, it's a really good thing it's just um helping you know generally people understanding the rationale and and maybe shifting a bit what they naturally have been doing but i uh, i i mean the the i'm just thinking about the students who might be cycling up uh, to ralph allen school and um so you so the plan for your thinking is that they would cycle along copsland and then through rainbow woods and then over the um uh well probably go onto the road and then cycle along, is it Bradford Road, um, to the school? I mean, I know there's, um, and you were talking about possibly some sort of thinking around um, something between that zebra crossing though, as Rainbow Woods comes out onto Bradford Road and the school, because I know there's, there is a kind of, traffic is quite fast in that bit, and I know there's a bit for it to slow down, but because it's, a, and you know, there's a lot of congestion in the mornings and there's bikes wiggling around and, it's a slightly hazardous kind of area. Um, Definitely, and we've st so certainly stood there and looked at the problem and we recognise that is an, a, another part of it that we still need to sort out. Mm. But we can't do everything at once. There no. is no magic wand here. But, yeah. So we, we, if we can get kids as far as Rainbow Woods in the short term and the other side of it, then they can get off and push their bikes. It's not that far between Rainbow Woods and the school if they have mm. to. Yeah. Um, and we are looking at alternative ways of getting them actually to the front of the school, but this allows them to get up to the plateau in the short term and on actually on the plateau we're working on the other section of Scholars Way as well. So, so that other bit coming from Coombe down towards the school before that zebra crossing after Rainbow Woods, what is there, is there thinking around that. There's a whole yeah. There's a whole piece of work going along there as well that we've been working on for some time that hopefully should be coming to fruition shortly. And there's plans and maps. I'm a, I'm aware. Of I mean, I I'm, I am aware. I don't come from that direction, but I'm aware. You know, a huge amount of students come along that road uh, from Coombe Down and sort of beyond. And um, I know that in some uh, meetings at school, parents have talked about their kind of concerns around the kids cycling along that road in the mornings with the kind of parked cars and the, all the stuff that there is on that road, which is, you know, it's a lot of people going to work and, you know, because I can see it's a hugely complex stretch of road and that activity first thing in the day and the, the around school, end of school is, you know, co very complex, but it would be, uh, you know, it's just good to hear that you're thinking about that. And, yeah, um, and, and when you say you're thinking about that, that's some sort of, cycle, you know, that continuation. Yeah, so cycling, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But the, the, the challenge is always hot cars. If I, wherever you are, whatever ward you represent as a councillor, if you say to people, you're going to take out parking, you know, it, it's a tough call and people don't like to hear that. So, you know, to make the change in the urban landscape to encourage active travel is going to require compromise by all vehicle users of whatever it is, be it a cyclist or a, a car. And how we bring ourselves to that compromise is going to be a tough nut to crack, to be honest. Mm. And that's the challenge with the climate emergency, I feel, is that what are we all willing to give up to get something else? Mm. 
-hmm. And how do we do that together? And certainly the journeys to school are an important element of what is causing um, air pollution in this city, congestion in this city, the health effects that that causes, the social deprivation that causes around that. So we need to do something. And this is our way of saying, okay, this is our first step towards that. And this is what we think would be a good way of enabling a huge number of people to begin active travel in this city safely that connects together. And I, and I would just say, you know, the more communication that we have around things like this so that uh, people can get a broader picture of the complexities of the situation and the fact that, you know, compromise is something that is about us understanding the complexity and realizing some things, you know, something needs to shift, I think is just really important. And I think, so it's, I'm really grateful for you both um, having a conversation with me. And I know that um, even in the context of Ralph Allen School with um, understanding the bus situation and uh, the dif difficulties of access because they're all private companies, it's always been a challenge for the parents because the parents quite often come in and think, um, the school is in charge of the buses so it's well the you know, council is in charge of the, the buses council. yeah exactly so and it's like that that conversation that we've been having over the the time I've been there as a parent um which has been the last 10 11 years it's it's and as a governor it's always just understanding those different aspects of the picture is really helpful to all of us to then understand the things that we can do uh, that are either helpful or encompass change or you know just supporting the whole to kind of make some good decisions about what we need to do and so that's really helpful so thank you is there anything else that um, either of you feel um, I haven't asked you or that you want to say no I don't think so other than we're really keen to, to get people's views on, on the schemes we've got and to go on our website there's an online questionnaire let us know what you think and, and, and people have got until 21st of March to do so. So is there a way, so what, what, how do they access that? They go onto the Baines website? Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's baines.gov.uk forward slash active travel schemes or from our homepage, um, just click on have your say and, and you can quite easily get to our consultation from there. I always feel like we're on Strictly Dancing and we need to say, and just below us here, go online. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and I regularly dance, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> we might manage to put a link in somewhere with what, wherever we put this. Uh, so yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. What, we, what, we, what we really want is to hear from people and for you to take part in the consultation. And also, you know, we need to open this up to the whole community, you know, the young people that need to get to school. What are their thoughts about this? Because so often in our consultations, we hear from a very narrow band of ages, and it'd be very useful to hear from younger people about what they think, and if they would use this route and think that's a good way forward. So we would really value that as well, if the young people could take part. Okay, that's great. Thank you both. That's really fantastic. And um, we'll look forward to seeing how it all unfolds. And hearing Thank you. Thanks, Joanna. Thanks, Paul.